Howdy folks, I haven't done a mineral identification video in eons. I haven't been in the lab quite as much, but the biggest factor was that the, there really wasn't anything worthwhile to video or to post. But I was going to uh, go through my rock bucket looking for something interesting when my rock buddy stopped by with a mineral for me to look at. Uh, and this is going to be very similar to the previous uh, rock analysis video where we were kind of looking for something that was either pyrite, calcopyrite, galena, kind of a sulfide metallic looking thing, which is what we have here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. He also gave me another one a little while ago that I that I've, haven't gotten to, and that one should probably be, be a little more interesting than this one. Here's a closer look at the samples. Both my rock friend and I think it looks like pyrite. The construction guy that actually dug them up thinks that there might be some zinc or silver or uh, lead in there. Uh, if it's not pyrite, uh, I'm thinking maybe marcasite, which has the same formula but a different uh, crystal structure. I'm going to try to do a little bit of physical testing. It's kind of hard when you just have a coating, but I think I have enough. Ooh, well that kind of fell apart. Maybe grayish. It's actually taking part of the plate away. Let's go and try to get a specific gravity. Like I said, this piece seems to be whole. And uh, we'll get a, a weight on it while it's dry. Because dry weight is 1.18 grams. I'd ideally like to have a much larger sample than that to uh, help with accuracy. But uh, we're not going to get really all that much even if I break these things apart. I have a pan suspended in a container of water here on the scale. And that measures out to 71.09 grams. And I'm going to take the, the rock sample, or the mineral sample, I'm going to put it in the pan. So now that we put the rock in there, even though it's not touching the, the sides of the beaker or the bottom, it's actually, uh, the water's actually trying to float that rock giving it a buoyancy force and uh, that weight is heavier than without the rock in there and uh, that that difference is the 71.34 minus the 71.09 so that's 0 0.25 grams that buoyancy force is actually the amount of displaced water uh, by, by the mineral so it's equal to 0 0.25 milliliters. So this rock, which weighs 1.18 grams, uh, takes up 0 0.25 milliliters. So that equals 4.72 grams per milliliter. And since the weight of water is 1 gram per milliliter, we can divide the two to get a specific gravity. So our specific gravity is actually 4.72. I think there's enough flat surface here to do a hardness check. So let's give her a try. Uh, this is a hardness pick of five. Well, it's hard to see with all the striations in here, but it, it doesn't feel like it's it's going into the mineral. You, you can actually sometimes feel a, kind of a grinding. Yeah, I don't really see much happening with the six. Let's try a seven. I think I'm getting something with the seven. I'm not sure here. Let me try a different spot. Well, it's definitely, definitely. Let's go back to the seven. I don't have a really sharp point on some of these. That's better. All right, seven, seven is, is scratching it. Okay, so maybe around seven, I'm, I'm guessing. Somewhere between six and seven. I would guess closer to seven. I broke a couple fragments of this material off. And before I do a fusibility test on it, I'm going to... Uh, check it uh, with a magnet. Yeah, I can get it to stick. It uh, actually shakes off, so it's not that magnetic. Uh, this big one, same, uh, I can't even get it to stick. So it's slightly magnetic. So we're going to go ahead and do a fusibility test here. Basically, we're looking to see if it fuses or melts under a strong flame. We have a couple nice sharp points on here, which is really nice for uh, seeing if anything's happening. Well, it's turning red. All right, yeah, it's de de definitely rounded off. And I'm going to double check it with the magnet. All right, it's become much more magnetic. 
Since that did fuse with the very hot torch flame, I'm going to try a piece with the uh, alcohol lamp. Well, something's kind of moving around. So I can't really tell if anything's happening. If something is going on here, it certainly isn't uh, easily apparent. Okay, here's a quick summary of the physical testing. Uh, for feel, I have smooth. Luster, I have metallic. Uh, fracture, I have uh, kind of conchoidal, kind of subconchoidal. Uh, tenacity, I have it as brittle. I uh, didn't see anything as far as a crystal system. Fusibility, uh, maybe a four uh, with a gas flame. And uh, you know, that definitely broke down. Specific gravity, about 4.7 and a Mohs hardness between six and seven and I'm kind of thinking it's closer to seven but a magnetism it showed some slight magnetism as is and definitely uh, strongly magnetic upon heating. I started to grind up some pieces here and before I got them very fine while they were still kind of rough uh, I took a picture under the microscope so I'll insert that here just to get some idea of the uh, fracture and uh, it looks it looks pretty much conchoidal to me and uh, now I got it pretty fine and don't know if you can see that but it's it's definitely a grayish color so that streak that was kind of hard to see that looked gray and uh, I'd have to concur with that that uh, it is a gray streak so now we're going to weigh up a couple tenths of a gram and uh, go into the realm of wet chemistry we have two tenths of our ground sample in the tube now we're adding concentrated nitric acid. Whoa, that's definitely reacting. I was getting ready to heat that, but it looks like I'm not going to need to. In fact, I don't see any more bubbling. I diluted the now centrifuge. And uh, we have some stuff on the bottom, so I'll pour the solution off. Now we're going to try it again. I have a little bit of water in there, and I'm going to add some nitric acid, so it's going to be a dilute nitric acid. And uh, there's, it's kind of difficult to tell the difference between marcosite and pyrite because they have the exact same composition. But actually, marcosite will dissolve uh, slightly and dilute... Uh, nitric acid. Alright, it's been a couple of minutes and I haven't seen anything with the dilute nitric acid. As usual, I'm using the Orsino Smith book and we're going to use the series of uh, three drop tests that we looked at the last uh, analysis with. A little bit of water, just so, just so we're not quite so strong here. I'm going to add two drops to each of the compartments. There's three compartments on this microscope slide. Now to the first one we add ammonium carbonate. We'll add a couple drops. The next section we're going to add ammonium sulfide. A couple drops and I just made this fresh so it's going to be pretty smelly. Well, I didn't have to add whew, any more than that. It's more than a little smelly. And the last one will add potassium iodide. Okay, well that's interesting. Looks like a brown precipitate, a black precipitate, and another brown precipitate. So if we look at our chart, well actually the only one that's brown in this column is iron and manganese. The only thing that's black here is iron and manganese, but also a whole bunch of other stuff like uh, cobalt, copper, lead, mercury, nickel, silver, tin, zinc. Well, no, I'm sorry, zinc is white, so that kind of leaves that out. The last one has this kind of, I guess I could call that a brownish red. Uh, arsenic says it's red from hot solutions. Bismuth is dark brown. Okay, if it was lead, it would be bright yellow, and I've done that, and uh, that's that's unmistakable so there's no lead there or, or mercury too is uh, a red anyways from this I'd have to conclude that we have uh, iron so let's go through and do some confirmation tests on different metals here and, and uh, just make sure we know what we have 
This is actually more of a spot test for iron. And the way that the material uh, precipitated out with that brown material when we added the ammonia really kind of shows that there's iron there. But we have three different iron ind indicators. And the first one is potassium thiocyanate. And we're going to add uh, a drop. And if it turns red, there's iron there. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's so much. It's kind of a kind of a black almost. Uh, the next one we're going to add is for ferric item er, ferric iron also. It's potassium ferrocyanide. And it should turn blue if there's ferric iron there, which it does. And very deep blue. And the last one is potassium ferrocyanide, which will look for ferrous iron. Oops, I added the wrong one. Let's try that again. And that does not turn a little blue. Now we're going to add a little bit of chloride to precipitate out the silver group if there's silver, lead, or mercury in there. So we're going to just use a salt solution, sodium chloride. All right, so that's, that's not precipitating out at all. All right, so... Not much there as far as silver, lead, or mercury. I made a reference solution from a reference sample I had of pyrite. So I'm going to do those drop tests with that and just see how that compares to our unknown here. So the first, uh, first dropper is the ammonium carbonate. Definitely got a brown precipitate going here. The second one is the ammonium sulfide. All right, black as usual. Now this is the one I'm interested in is if we're going to get a kind of a reddish, brownish... Uh, color here. Yeah, we do. Actually, even more so than our sample. I'm not sure if there's bismuth in there or not. All the tests are kind of difficult to, to do. Here's a 500 part per million standard of ferric iron that I have sitting around. So I'm going to put that in the spot plate. I'm going to add the potassium iodide to see what, what that looks like. Alright, so that's not really showing. I mean, it's kind of has a color. But not that brown precipitate. But then again, it's not that strong, but, but still. I always like looking at the material that did not dissolve while trying to put it into solution. I actually weighed it up, and it's it's in, insignificant. It's It kind of depends on how the balance is scaled. So the vast, vast majority of it got dissolved. And what's left over uh, often is like a silicate or, or something that, that's not soluble. But this looks like pieces of the rock. I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's got a brassy color. They're, they're a little bit larger. So I, th I think what it was is uh, the, the stuff that we had powdered up dissolved right away. And maybe I didn't even have enough acid into it. But anyways, it, it was a very good uh, dissolution of the material. So what did I learn? Basically two things. The first was that the this wet chemistry is really geared towards the larger concentration main component uh, analysis for these things. It's very difficult to look at some of the trace materials. Uh, there could possibly be some bismuth in there, uh, according to the uh, drop test that we did. I did do a reference sample of another piece of pyrite, and that came up the same. So uh, maybe there's it's, it's just the way the test runs out, or maybe they both have a little bit of bismuth. I don't know. But I did go through a bunch of rabbit holes looking for possible trace quantities of other elements and uh, really spent a lot of time and didn't get a lot of results. So, so that's, that's one conclusion that I have to remind myself of. Uh, the second thing is that the material is pyrite, uh, which is pretty obvious from first looking at the material. So let's take a look at some of the results. Here's some information that tends to indicate that it's pyrite or marcasite. For one, the hardness is a little bit harder than a lot of the other possibilities. It's between six and six and a half. I measured between 6 and 7, thinking it was closer to 7, but still within judgment. The specific gravity of those two is between 4.8 and 5 or so. I measured about 4.7, well within air, especially for the small piece that I was looking at. Uh, it wasn't soluble in hydrochloric acid, which is consistent with both of those, and not with some of the other candidates. The wet chemistry showed very strong iron, so there's no doubt of uh, being a, an iron material. Uh, and it was magnetic upon heating, which, which is one of the properties of, of these two. Uh, the reason why I say it is pyrite rather than marcasite was the color. It's more of a gold or brassy color, while marcasite is more of a sil silvery brassy color, a little bit lighter in color. 
from the fracture that I saw, it looked kind of conchoidal. And pyrite is conchoidal. And also the solubility. And I didn't look at this too close. Pyrite is soluble in concentrated nitric acid, but not in uh, dilute, like uh, marcosite will actually start to dissolve a little bit. Also, after it's soluble, it's pyrite, the solution is not cloudy, while in marcosite it, it has some free sulfur, which may make it a cloudy solution. So that's it. There we go. No, no big surprises at all. So looks like the material was, was pyrite. Well, thanks for looking at the video, and uh, we'll do another one, and maybe we'll get some surprises on the next one.